Example 6, find the derivative for each of these. So look at part A, y equals 5 over 2x cubed. So again, before we try to take the derivative, the best thing you can do is rewrite this function like so. This way we can use the power rule. Okay, so when we take the derivative, you're going to take the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, so that's going to be negative 15 halves x, and then you're going to subtract 1 from negative 3, so that's going to be negative 4. So that would be the derivative there. This process, I think, you can see is pretty easy once you get used to it. Let's look at b. The first thing I would do is rewrite this as 5 over 2x cubed. This would be, if you cube 2, that's going to be 8. And then this would be x cubed. And then I would make this 5 eighths x to the negative third power. And then we can... Um, we can take the derivative. So again, we take the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient. This is going to be negative 15 eighths x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent to be negative 4. Let's look at c. y equals 7 over 3x to the negative second. So the first thing I would do, I would put this into the denominator, or think of it like this, 7 thirds x squared, and then I would take the derivative. Notice when I'm taking the derivative, I use this y prime. Okay, that way, that, that way you're actually indicating you're using the proper notation that you're taking the derivative. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to get 14 over 3 x to the first power, Next one, this would equal, um, let's see, first of all, let's rewrite this as 7, 3x squared, and then let's write this as 7, 3 squared would be 9x squared, then I would multiply, make this 63x squared, now I'm ready to take the derivative, so y prime would be 126x to the first. All right, let's look at example 7. Example 7, now instead of looking at just one term, we're going to look at polynomials, so term, many term functions. And all we're going to do is take the derivative of each one of these terms individually using the power rule. So let's do this. So f prime of x, the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared. Uh, let's see, the derivative of, let's do minus, 4x would be 4, because it would be x to the 0 power, which would be um, x, or which would, x would equal 1, plus, uh, let's see, the derivative of a constant is 0. So we don't really need to write plus zero here. Okay, let's look at B. B, we got g of x equals negative x to the fourth over two plus three x cubed minus two x. So g prime of x, the derivative of negative x to the fourth over 2 would be negative 4 over 2 x to the third plus 9 x squared minus 2. We simplify this a little bit, make this negative 2 x cubed plus 9 x squared minus 2. Let's look at the next one. Y prime. C, 
So notice what they did here. This was a rational function. And what they did, they took the x and divided it by each of these terms. Giving us 3x minus 1 all over 1. Uh, 3x minus 1 plus 1 over x. Um, the next thing I would do, I would probably write this as 3x minus 1 plus x to the negative first. Then I would take the derivative. So y prime equals the derivative of 3x would be 3. The derivative of negative 1 would be 0. So I could put plus or minus 0, doesn't matter which one. And then the derivative of x to the negative first would be minus 1x to the negative second. So we'd simplify this a little bit and make this 3 minus 1x to the negative second.